Um, what this area is about five years ago, it was planted into 18 varieties uh, and species of perennial grasses to just look at varietal differences. Uh, when that project concluded, we took the opportunity to look at it for a different aspect. There is a relatively new herbicide called Esplanade or Indazaflam. Um, it works as a soil, uh, root inhibitor, so it stays bound within the top quarter inch of soil. Um, and the idea is that it won't negatively impact established perennial grasses because their roots will be below the zone of herbicide activity. Um, so in a seed production system like this is simulating um, or like what we're trying to do in town, some of the major issues are weeds. Um, they can provide competition with the desirable plants which would lower seed production and they can also be a seed contaminant. Um, in this picture of western wheatgrass there are two cheatgrass seeds or downy brome seeds circled in red. Um, they are very similar in size and shape to the western wheatgrass and that's similar to a lot of our grass species that we would harvest for seed. Um, it makes it very hard to have clean seed lots because it's hard to clean them out. Um, and then so we want to control the weeds. One of the easiest methods is herbicide but then we run into the problem of are we controlling the weeds sufficiently and at the same time not hurting our grasses to a point where it's no longer an effective option for weed management. Um, so, like I said, in 2013, these grasses were established. Uh, and as you walk out here, you'll see which species and varieties were planted. And then in March of 2017, a mix of um, Esplanade at five ounces per acre and Roundup at 12 ounces per acre were applied across each um, block. So there are four blocks out here. You're looking at one block. Um, so the herbicide was applied up or east and west, I guess I should say. Um, so you'll be able to see which half of that was um, sprayed because you can still see some of the annual weed control, which is what we want to see. Um, what we did next was we took um, seed production data. We collected inflorescences. Um, counted and weighed them and then looked at germination so we could look at viability of the seeds produced. Um, overall, many of the species weren't impacted by the herbicide application at all. Um, the species that were most impacted were the wheat grasses and wild rice. Um, this graph shows um, the species that showed those differences. Um, some of the um, impacts were reductions in inflorescence number, 60, 45, even 90 percent reductions with the presence of the herbicide. In terms of germination, much fewer of the species were impacted, only the Washoe Basin Wild Rye variety and the Opportunity, Opportunity Big Bluegrass had reductions in germination. Um, so what we would like to continue seeing is the long-term effects of this herbicide esplanade on these perennial grasses. Um, Esplanade is supposed to last in the soil for around three years, so we'll continue to see these effects, and that's what we'd want to know long term in this type of seed production system. Um, does anyone have any questions? What was the timing of the herbicide? When did you put it on? It was uh, late March, so all of the annual grasses, the annual weeds, had emerged and were actively growing. A few of the perennial grasses had broken dormancy. So it does have effect on germinating. Yep. So that was why the that was why we added the glyphosate treatment was because we already had some plants that were emerged, and that would be a post-emergent solution to some of those. And I think some, and Beth and I were talking earlier, I think some of the patterns that we saw in that first year were due to the glyphosate. And so this year's data will be tied more directly to Esplanade effects rather than the mixing. 